Example two, college freshmen from a wide variety of colleges across the U.S. participated in a survey where 61% reported that they are attending college they are attending a college that was their first choice. If you took a random sample of 100 freshmen, how likely is it that at least 50 of those students are attending their first choice college? So it's saying at least 50, so that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind for later. But let's draw this population. So here's my population of college freshmen. And 61%, so not quite half, but a little more than half. So 61%, that's our P. And 1 minus P is not quite 40%, but it's 39. So the other 39, they're not attending their first choice college, right? Okay, so now imagine taking out of that population a random sample of 100 students, 100 freshmen, and um, looking at the sample proportion and plotting that on the SDOSP. So SDOSP. 100 is still a pretty large n, so I'm going to go with that normal distribution. And I know that my, uh, my s dosps mu, um, the mu sub p hat, this should equal p, and that's 61 percent, right? And what is my standard deviation of this s dos? Because I'm not just looking at, you know, who's in here, I'm really looking at if I took a sample of 100 students, how good is my sample? Whenever you hear that, like how good is this sample, then you know you need a sampling distribution. Okay, and so I should probably find my uh, uh, SDOS uh, standard error, right? So we call it standard error because it's a sampling distribution. And so here it's the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. And that's going to be the square root of 0 0.61 times 0 0.39 divided by 100, right? And I'll just look that up here. So square root of 0.61 times 0.39 divided by 100. So that's uh, about 0 0.0488, uh, 0.0488. So 0.0488. And so each jump here, so this little jump right here is point four, oh, sorry, point zero, four eight eight, right? So that's how big those little jumps are. Now, I, um, I'm looking for um, how likely is it that at least 50 of, their, of these students are attending their first choice college. Now, I could turn this into a percentage by looking at, um, 50 over 100, right? So my, uh, the p hat that I've been given is 50 over 100, and that's 0.5, and I want to know how likely is this p hat. And so it's nice to find out where the p hat is, and, it, and so this is the raw score, but uh, raw proportions, sorry, not raw score, it's the p hats but it'd be nice to find the z-score, right? And so the z-score of 0.5 should be the distance between 0.5 and the mean divided by the little jumps. How, uh, how big are my, uh, are my jumps? In order to find how many jumps away. All right, and so let's put that in our calculator. So 0.5 minus 0.61 divided by 0.0488. So we get negative 2.25. So here, we're, we're somewhere like this. Negative 2.25. 
and this is for uh, 0.5. Okay, and we want to know how likely is it that at least 50 of those students are attending that first choice college, right? When we say at least, this is the lower limit, right? That's the least, right? And so we're really looking for this whole thing, right? And so you could look that up in the back of your book, or you could say the proportion that p hat will be um, greater than or, or equal to 0.5 equals, I don't know if you remember this notation, this is from fairly long time ago when we did normal distribution. Okay, so here um, we want to know, uh, I remember in, in Excel they, they give us the negative side, so we would have to do 1 minus this little piece. So 1 minus norm z dist, norm z s in order for standardized, that's how we get that z. And we put in our z, and we should get uh, 0.9879. So very, very close to almost everybody, 0 0.9879. 0 0.9879. So almost 99%, almost, um, of our samples should have at least 50% of those students attending their first choice college.